the ASTM standard that we need to use for this um, impact test is that we need to notch the samples. We need to give them um, this kind of um, notch. You can see like this one. We want to make this little notch on our sample so that um, that's what the ASTM standard requires for us when we are going to be um, doing the impact test. So you can see our sample so far, they do not have that. So we will be using this notch um, indenter, um, uh, this notch indenter. So what we're going to be using is we're gonna be putting, you can see our uh, marked face facing upward. And we're going to tie uh, the screws on the back until it's the metal, it's not moving, it's completely tight. We don't want it to move as we are doing the test. All right, so it's they're firmly tied, it's firmly hold. So you can see it has this pin, which is preventing the indenter. You see this teeth will be carving uh, the notch. So I will, you know, I will um, hold this in the lever, and then as it raises, I will remove the pin. So I'm gonna put it here, and you can see. So I will there's it up move the pin and then slowly I will start making my indentions and you can see that it takes a little bit of force because we're making an indention on the steel or on the alloy this is uh, steel alloy and it takes a little bit of force so now uh, I'm done so I will not raise the lever um, because if I go all the way up while well, the metal is still there, you know, the teeth will break, so we don't want that. So I will just loosen up uh, a little bit on the back. And I will just raise it slightly and just sneak the sample to the side. And you can see I have the notch down now. So now that there's no sample, I can uh, put it up, bring it back slowly and carefully. And I can put the pin back in place and now you can see that my sample it's notch. We're gonna be doing that for the other sample as well before testing. So now that the samples are notched we will be placing them inside this cooler and uh, slash heater and what this machine does is that it um, takes our samples into the desired temperature. So if we want to test our samples in uh, cold temperatures, we will put them inside this machine with, um, with a really low temperature. And if you want to test our samples at a high temperature, we will be putting this, you know, to heat. Uh, so what I will do is I will place my samples inside here and I will place both my samples on that clamp. Uh, but since I only have one hand free, I won't be able to show you that on the video and you will leave it in there um, for as long as I need until they reach the desired temperature. Okay, so this is our, um, your, our SATEC uh, impact pendulum tester. Uh, and what this one does is that this one will be, you know, impact our specimen. So this is basically a pendulum. I don't know, I don't think you can see it in the video. I will show, you, show it to you right now. Uh, but this one, what it does is that it swings this heavy arm, we will lift it up, and once we let it go, that mass will break our sample. And afterwards, we can observe, you know, what, uh, how our sample looks like, how much it deformed, and it can tell us also how much energy in uh, foot pounds it absorbed uh, due to the impact. Okay, so before we start testing, we need to set up our pendulum. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now, as you can see, I'm gonna raise the arm and you can see that we have this safety pin on the top. I will need to remove the safety pin first, move the lever to the right, and then I will lock it and then uh, make sure I can raise the arm so that I can, I can make sure that the arm will not fall as we are setting up. Um, so let's do that. I will come, I will remove the pin, I put the lever to the other side, and I raise the arm until I hear a, a lock. 
I will put the pin back and I will reset the this uh, lever over here I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset this um, to measure so I'm gonna put it over here to the left and when the swing the arm goes you can see it will go to the right so if I let it go right now you can see that it will go back to zero because it's, it's not breaking anything so that's how we know that it's calibrated because it takes zero force pounds to break nothing so I'm just gonna release the arm and you can see how the needle now it went to the other side so the arm will keep on swinging until we apply the brake so I'm gonna remove the pin be careful with the arm and put it to the left and it will stop moving you can see that now it's it's breaking and it's removing so we need to do this with our, our sample so I'm gonna set it up again I'm gonna move my arm to the left um, Raise my arm. I will put my needle back to the left, the black line. And now I'm going to test an actual sample. So I have this sample over here. Um, this is just a sample. This is not the one I'm testing. Uh, this is just for demonstration of this lab. So this is the part that we need people to work in teams because we're going to be getting our sample from the heater or cooler we're gonna get a sample inside I need someone to hold the lid want to pick the sample and then we have about 10 seconds to bring our sample and place it over here because we don't want the temperature to change so we will practice this part so we will put we will get the sample you can see um, that the male part goes with the female part the notch and we will place it over here so you can see that the tongs they fit right into the where the specimen goes so i'm just gonna leave it there and we make sure that the notch it's exactly at the center you can see it is facing left you can see now we want everybody to stay behind this white line uh, so we do that we're counting make sure, make, making sure that it's not taking that long and now we will test so now i will release the arm and we'll see and that's my sample so Let's put the pin, let's break it. And once it's broke, once it's stopped, we can go and pick up our sample. I put the pin back. And let's pick our sample. All right. And this is how much energy it needed to break. So we're reading the yellow one. So you can see we're about 10, uh, 12.5. We were almost about almost about 15 foot pounds needed to break this sample at room temperature and this is how it looks my sample uh, and you know we can get this one back to measure uh, you can see how it's deformed right you can see the, the face so we're gonna measure this one we're gonna measure that our expansion we're gonna measure um, we got the fracture energy from the needle from reading the pendulum and we're also gonna do the fracture appearance test to determine just visually how much ductility, how much percent ductility, how much percent brittle our sample is. So now that I've broken my sample, you can see this is the one that we just did and this one is the one I did off camera and I'm still waiting for another cold one. Um, just for comparison, I'm going to get, you know, um, I'm gonna be measuring their lateral expansion once again. So I will, this time I will have two marked sides and two lateral and two unmarked sides at the beginning we have one and one now we will have two so i'm looking for my uh mark should be uh, it is here so this is my marked side i will put it once again and measure that so you can see that's 0.25 once again uh and then i will do the unmarked side for that one and looks about a little more now it looks about 0.26 so you can see it expanded a little bit and then the other side also the other marked you can see this one decrease and the unmarked side this one it's about the same so you can see uh, we're going to be doing this for both of our samples um, 
and we're going to be doing that we're going to get the larger of the values and we're going to write that as our lateral expansion and you know we're going to put it with all the data with all of our other um, samples at different temperatures and then we can also do the we also have the energy we already recorded the energy based on what we got from the pendulum that's another test and we can also do over here the visual test um, we are going to be look at our sample uh, like this and based on this we can uh, try to determine which one of this um, it's falling I think this is percent um, ductile if I'm not mistaken I think 100% ductile to 0% ductile so 100% brittle uh, and we are able to determine you know based on the shape of this so this one we're done at uh, room temperature I'm still waiting for my cold ones uh, and so basically this one you just look at the image and depending on that this is what you are getting so now we'll get the cold ones and then later on you guys can do a hot one and based on that um, you can you know test which one it is for your lab what you are doing is you are uh, you're gonna wait until you get all the data from all labs so you can do your uh, ductal to brittle transition um, graph like the ones shown here uh, so you can see this one you can do this in your, uh, once you get all the data so this is for your uh, fracture energy which we got from the pendulum and your lateral expansion which we got from the over here from this little gauge so what you're doing is once we get all the data you're basically waiting one one point and once we get all the data from all other classes we are able to make these uh, curves uh, and with that we are going to look where they go from you know the brittle plateau to the ductal plateau and any point that exactly you know in the middle of that we can tell our dvtt so we basically may, we might get three different dvtts that all of them will be you know about the same uh, temperature range so uh, so your conclusion will be based on all the data but for your notebook at least for your notebook for the data that you do the lab you will put what was the uh, fracture energy, the lower expansion, and um, and also the percent ductal or fracture of your own um, experiment. But for the memo, we are doing a conclusion based on all of the data, so do not get confused. Notebook, based on what you got for that day. Memo, based on the data from everybody else. So you will show these two, three graphs on the memo, um, and that will be for it. So. If you got any questions, you know, you can always let us know.